Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, December 6th. I am trying to open chapstick with one hand. So I am doing like a semi maintenance day today, guys. Like I need to get my hair done. I haven't had it um, touched up, like the color touched up. Ooh, sorry about this lighting, oh my God. It's a little better. Okay, so I haven't had, I haven't had this color touched up since I got my hair cut. It is so early, my face is like literally so puffy and gross. But I'm excited to get my hair um, colored and then just cut back a little bit low. It's just been so much easier to maintain with it being lower and I just actually just really like the look on me. I'm gonna keep my hair short for quite some time. So I'm here, um, I get my hair cut at um, Touch of Precision off Freedom Drive and you guys get to see my barber in a little bit. His name is Kyle, he's super funny. Um, also from New York, so, well not from New York, but you know what I mean. We're both Charlotte transplants in a way. So I'm a little late and by little I mean 17 minutes late, so um, I'm just gonna like head inside, but I always had to like, let me see who's inside through the window real quick, because I'm always the only woman in there, and it's just a little hood around here, so it's just a bunch of big ass N-words <laughs> just in the barbershop, and I was actually, coincidentally, I was just watching, I don't watch the show, but just a clip of that Netflix show, Harlem, and I saw that one clip where it's like, I guess a woman was getting her hair cut low um, in the barbershop or whatever. And they were, um, like the, some of the barbers were being disrespectful. I wish a nigga would. this color I'm obsessed with this cut but I'm obsessed with the color now mmm I'm gonna be rocking this for a cute little minute I never thought I could like pull these off let alone just really be in a space that I'm like let me just do it let me try it let me just try new things so I'm just wow I'm just leaning into it for sure so good morning guys today is Tuesday December 7th as you guys know, um, every Tuesday I am going to be doing some form of question and answer. I asked a bunch of you, um, or sorry, a bunch of you asked me questions last week. I'm going to try to get through some of those questions today while I put on a little bit of makeup, a little bit of face, so that I can take you guys behind the scenes of me making a TikTok, a reel, and maybe like a post for my Instagram page. So, let's get to it. 
Okay, so uh, like I said, a couple of you asked me some questions and I'm gonna answer them while I put on just a little bit of makeup. I'm not gonna do too much with the makeup really because obviously the point is to show off or reveal my new hair color, not really my face. So I'm gonna keep it slightly natural. Let's answer some questions. Um, all right, so first, let me see, let me see. Not a question, but I really love your content by the way and you are beautiful. Thank you. I read that one because I kind of needed to hear that today. I needed to hear that people are watching my content. I needed to hear that like I am beautiful. Thank you. Cause some days I truly, truly don't. Like I don't care if I go get my hair done. Like I don't care what I'm doing. Sometimes you just feel okay. Like you just feel, mm, you know? So I needed to read that. I needed to hear that. Thank you so much for saying that to me. Um, all right. Someone wants to know how old I am. I am 32, October 1st, I'm a Libra. Get it straight. Um, where are you from? So I'm born and raised in Miami, well half raised in Miami, Florida, but I have lived up north all my life. So I went to school in um, Pennsylvania, Philly, and then I moved to New York, and then now I live in Charlotte, but I'm originally a 305 girl. Um, <laughs> oh, are you keeping, are you going to keep your hair at that length? This looks phenomenal on you. Thank you. No, I absolutely am. Like it's been really, really helping me manage my scalp. Like I almost have no scalp issues while my hair is low. So I absolutely am going to keep it this, this length. And I love it, love it, love it, love it for myself. Um, so yeah, I will be. Um, what's one thing you learned along your recent journey? I learned that, let me see. So um, something that I learned along my journey thus far is actually something, it's actually like really leaning into um, this information that I received about myself from last year when everyone was on Clubhouse because of quarantine. Um, and there was a room that was specific for human design on there. It was like once or twice every week. I learned that I am a projector if you're a projector, leave that in the comments. Hi, nice to meet you. We see each other, okay? But yeah, so I really have been leaning into that specifically with my content, specifically with YouTube, right? Because it's like, I'm someone as a full on, like I'm just through and through a projector. As, a, as that type of person, I'm someone who like, you know, I'm putting in a lot of work in something and sometimes I get really, really discouraged when I'm like, not many people are even viewing this or what's going on with the YouTube algorithm or you know, you get like that natural pressure that you're like, I gotta reach out to this company, I gotta reach out to this company, I gotta do this, I gotta do that, I gotta get ahead of it, I gotta make this worth it monetarily, something or whatever. But when I remember the kind of like slogan for a projector, it's you're supposed to do what you love while waiting for the invitation. So people who are projectors burn out very easily. We are not worker bees. We're like big picture, we can direct something, but someone else has to kind of do all the work to make it like, not all the work, we're, we'll be involved, but I'm not somebody who thrives off like working at something every single day, especially if it's not my vision. Um, I'm definitely not someone who thrives in, you know, like just daily mundane tasks. I will burn out very quickly. I need a lot of time to rest. I need a lot of time to like rethink my strategy about things. Um, and that's very, very much uh, something that's always been my personality or my arch archetype and finding out that that is something, you know, also under the umbrella of a projector, like really, really made sense to me. And I relate that to this journey because I did find myself running behind opportunities and like, I'm gonna email this, I'm gonna email this, I'm gonna set up the timeline, this many emails need to go out today, tomorrow, and you know, the next day. And then I remembered, wait a minute, like, I actually, this is making me starting to hate filming content for YouTube. It's starting to make me hate posting things on Instagram because it's starting to feel like work all of a sudden. So once I leaned back into that mantra, I remembered like why I started doing this. This was for me. This was for my enjoyment. This was for, to push like my creative skills and knowledge of creativity. And you know what, while I do this, while I do what I love, I'm going to wait for the invitation. Someone is going to find me doing the work and then we'll go to the next steps from there. So that is something I really learned during my journey. 
Okay, so I'm gonna start doing my makeup while I'm talking to you guys. So the first thing I'm gonna use, um, I already have uh, my Super Goop moisturizer on my face from this morning. So first thing I'm gonna use is my Caudalie um, Grape Water Face Face Mist, like face moisturizer. I, I really love using this before applying any type of makeup and like right after I use my moisturizer, I just feel like it's such a, it like gives your face, first of all, like wake, wakes your face right up. I'm having like a hard time with English this morning. It wakes your face right up, but then it also just really helps moisturize your face and a smooth finish for whatever you are about to apply. And then I'm just gonna put a little under eye concealer. It's the Can't Stop, Won't Stop by NYX. And the color is, oh, here it is. The color is Warm Honey. I'm gonna apply that. So, there are all different types of ways. There are all different types of ways to apply your concealer. And every day I log on to the internet, every day someone's like, no, that's not it. We used to do it that way, girl. You gotta do it this way now. And it's like, shut up, okay? Yappa, yappa, okay? Whatever. I'm tired of learning new-ish. My brain is full, my CPU is full, leave me alone. If it still works for me, I'm finna do it, okay? I'm finna do it. So I apply this way, I go up. And I wanna cover a little bit more today just because I don't really, I don't have any foundation on, I don't have anything else on my face, so I do wanna cover a bit more of my cheeks with the, with the concealer. Cause like right now the trend is don't come down. Don't do this. You do this a little bit right here a little bit right here a little bit right here like okay sure sure Bob but this works for me so let's try down a bit so I'm gonna blend 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 just need a little bit of brightening you know what I mean just a little bit of brightening nothing too much one thing about this color can you guys see that it blends in a little too well. Right now, because I'm losing color, I think I am warm honey. So, you can barely see that I put concealer under my eye, but I guess when filming, it gets helpful. So after I do the concealer, I'm just gonna go in and bake a little bit with my Laura Mercier. I use the translucent honey over top, and then I actually put it on with a um, I don't put it on with a brush, I like pack it on. So I use a beauty blender for that as well. So okay, while I'm doing that, let's find another question. <laughs> Were you nervous about making new friends in a new city? Um, not really. I'm not really like, so I'm not the most outgoing person, um, but I feel like moving to this city, I've had nothing but time, really. And I know that in order to like continue on the journey that I'm on, you know, like really like doing new things, really getting away from behaviors that were kind of making me, you know, like isolate myself uh, and then in turn end up going like back into like a toxic situation because I'm so isolated. I knew that I needed to do new things. I knew that I needed to really create a community who understands what I have been going through. Um, and also like it helped me like, you know, wanting to diversify the friends that I already have. Cause it's like, you know, you, you, you make good friends and lifelong friends with people, but they might not have gone through what you have. So it's like, you can't expect them to always be ready to listen, understand and guide you through what it is that you're going through because they have not been through it themselves. So some of the advice that they might give you back or some of the ways that they interpret what's happening to you, again, specifically when it's emotional abuse, may not fit, right? And I would hate for that to end my friendships with them because I feel unsupported by them. So I knew that I needed to diversify my friends for sure. So when I came out here and in starting this YouTube, I definitely was far more open to making friends with people, new people, and specifically people who um, who are single moms. Um, 
and not only single moms, but also some single moms who have just coincidentally gone through very similar experience that I have gone through. Uh, and so yeah, that's been, it's been really helpful. Having both platforms has been really helpful with meeting new people, it's made it like quite easier. A lot of times people come to me, I don't really have to like search for, search for that, those new connections. I have met up with some people. Um, oh my God, just reminds me. Someone was trying to meet up with me and I completely forgot to get back to them. All right, I'm gonna, okay. It's in the CPU, I'll remember. I will remember to get back to them tonight. I feel so bad, like she was definitely wanting to hang out. Um, and we can, like I'm open. I don't know what my process is for choosing, like okay, you or not you, I don't know. I don't really like discriminate really, but like sometimes you just get that vibe, that energy, like we start talking on online first, you know, exchanging a couple of like, what do you like? This is what I like. You get, you know, per, a feel of the person. And then from there, we just see if we want to hang out and then see how that goes. And then our kids will meet. Um, but then I also, also, you know, I have to keep a balance. I do, um, I feel like I am starting to like move a little bit more into finding friends who aren't moms. Like I don't want to all the time hang out with like a mom and then we're just talking about mom shit or like we're just like complaining about whatever happens you know what i mean like i just want to go out i want to like reconnect with like my like you know my cute side like you're just really getting out and going to dance going out to like date going out to just have a drink going out to just have a good time um because i just yeah like you're, you're multifaceted people i am not just a mom i am not just someone who is recovering from like a really traumatic situation or like you know healing from a traumatic situation like i i'm doing so much more than that. i am so much more than that so again diversify the friends and be open to it and people will come to you. I actually need to get one more brush. I have to brush the excess thing off of this. So hold on a second. Here I am. Brush that off. Okay. So. That's on. Next, I'm just gonna do a quick brow. Um, I'm gonna use my NYX Professional Micro Bra uh, Pencil in the color Espresso. Do that real quick. Again, keeping the makeup pretty light and pretty natural because I wanna show off my hair color, not my pretend makeup skills that I don't have just yet. I feel like I need to, I got my eyebrows done quite a while ago and they were really lasting. So they were like 14 freaking dollars. That's the one thing about Charlotte. It's it's cheap to live here, but it's not cheap to live here. Like services are astronomical. They're even more expensive than when I lived in New York. Like, I guess, I don't know what it is. I don't know. Like getting your, getting your nails done here is insane. Getting your eyelashes, getting your eyebrow, not eyelashes, getting your eyebrows done though and your nails done here. Um, and your hair is insane. Like even for Cadence's hair, like they charge me here what I would pay for an adult head in New York. I don't know what's going on with that. And also like all those memes that we were reading, or at least I guess I was reading when I was um, in New York about, you know, those girls that are like, come with your hair already done, come with your hair braided. Like, uh, like when you are going to get your hair braided, they all live here. I did not think that really existed or i really thought that people exaggerated when they were talking about that but nope they really live here um because it's like if i don't pre-stretch cadence's hair like after i wash her hair and we're going to get braided they want me to pre-stretch her hair before i get there because god forbid they turn on a blow dryer and do it themselves like I don't know if they do it themselves too. And if they do do it themselves, they'll charge you an extra $50, 50 bucks to stretch out a kid's hair that you're about to braid down. I don't know. Don't get reported mamas. All right, let me brush that out just a bit so they're not too stand out. How's it looking? I'm gonna get better lighting when I'm done with this. Hmm, let me see what other question.
how are we combating seasonal sadness and holiday triggers? So, hmm, I'm not sure I've hit seasonal sadness. I know I'm PMSing currently, because I'm calling all my friends like, I miss you so much, like, let's just cry together. And luckily I have cry together friends, but I'm not really sure I've gone through any seasonal sadness, luckily. Uh, holiday triggers for me, I really, this, I don't, like, I'm just really grateful for the space that I'm in as the holidays are approaching. I went through Thanksgiving, just my, me and my daughter, and we did our own thing. We had a wonderful Thanksgiving, a wonderful day before, her birthday is the day before. Um, we're about to have an amazing Christmas. Like, we did all our shopping together, we did our decorating together. Um, I don't, yeah, I'm not really feeling any triggers this year. I'm just so focused on, like, wow like i can't believe i was able to give her this this christmas i can't believe that i'm in a space that i'm in i can't you know like I, I made it happen i'm focusing on making it happen i'm focusing on what i brought to this house what i brought to my daughter um and yeah like just our little family me and this kid this kid and me and i just feel really happy about it i feel really blessed um not to say that I can't change as we get closer you know like every day is something new but right now i feel really positive about it and I feel like maybe, I guess, advice, if you are feeling triggered, specifically if you are a single mom or you're not near your family, your family may be toxic and therefore you feel very lonely during the holidays, romanticize, romanticize, romanticize what you can do for yourself. Um, if you can't go home, make your new tradition and then make it something that is, you know, a life that you have to look forward to, a part of your life that you, you, you have to look forward to. Um, uh, you know, like, if this is the time to really go inward I would say um, you don't need a whole bunch of people around you to have family like be your own family or make your friend a family member you know what I mean like sometimes friends can be much better family to you than your actual family so again romanticize 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 like it really really helps because it's like instead of focusing on you know your, like what you don't have or what everybody says you should have let's like focus on what you do have and love the hell out of it that really helps me. So hopefully that helps you. What is one thing you do in your day that is just for you? So one thing I have been doing, um, I fell back a little bit on it, but something that is just for me is I have breakfast every morning now. That is something that I've always struggled with because I get up and I'm getting right into like childcare and it's really, really hard to sit back and like take care of myself while I'm taking care of her. I tend to like hyper focus on her. Um, I know where it comes from, but that's for another video. But yeah, I tend to hyper focus on her and not really do what it is that I need to be doing. So now when I drop her off, I make sure to take a moment, sit down and eat my breakfast. So that is definitely something I do for myself. Um, hmm, I'm cheating, they only ask for one thing, but another thing I make sure I do for myself, I really notice this by myself, when I am triggered, when I am not feeling well, I immediately jump into taking care of myself. Like whether that be getting in a shower, taking a hot shower immediately, and just like taking my time to moisturize right afterwards or whatever I need in that moment, I'm gonna do it. Like I'm going to do it in order to like repair myself, protect myself or make myself feel safe. Uh, so those are the two things that I really, really um, do for me um, and that really helped me stabilize and make me feel safe with myself. So now I'm just putting on a little blush. It's just my NARS Exhibit A. Beautiful color, love this color. Someone asked me though, when am I moving back to New York? Never say never, but I'm not sure what's in New York for me anymore with a toddler and especially where I was living in Brooklyn. Like it's just like, it was super difficult. I just felt constantly like stressed out, anxious, like regardless of what I was like intrinsically going through while living there, I think that just, New York in general is insane. I absolutely want to like live my life and I feel like living in New York, you're live, it, it, I don't know. It's, and this is just personally for me, it was hard to live life there. Um, and it was hard to live life because I felt like I, you, I was working in order to pay, to pay rent. And I was making a decent living, but it's just like you blink and your money's gone. And it's gone because you paid rent. So it was just, it was really ridiculous. And it's also just like, anxiety inducing, inducing with a child because you know it's car is an issue don't have a car then it's you're really at the mercy of the transit system or the 98 dollars for a three block ride ubers and waiting outside in a line for every single thing and that's just like 
who has the luxury to do that when you're with a three-year-old? Not me. So, yeah, so I don't know. It's a no for me. I'm, a, I'm all right in Charlotte for right now. This is definitely a really great, like, family-oriented city, um, and I really feel like Cadence is in every activity imaginable. I can drive to Target and park. I could drive to Publix and park. And New York doesn't even have Publix, so it's a no. It's a no. Ooh, what are we treating ourselves to for Christmas? One thing about me, I'm gonna treat myself. I'm gonna treat myself every freaking time. This year, I treated myself to two um, luxury handbags, one smaller, one smaller like little pouch and then another one just like a crossbody because I deserved. I really survived some ish this year. And so I did what I had to do. Did I have to do it? No, but also yes. Okay, I can add a little lip treatment. I thought I lost this. This is my favorite. I'm like screaming, I'm sorry. I thought I lost this. This is my favorite. Um, lip nourishment it's um from um first aid beauty so it's ultra repair lip therapy so bomb so good it's like 10 times better than Laneige if you ask me so putting that on okay you guys ready i might have too much blush on the one side of my face but we'll see in a second Okay, so here's the finished look. Very natural, not too much. So all I have on is concealer, the translucent powder over it, did my brows, and then put a little bit of blush on. I actually should finish it with another mist spray. Okay, here I am. Just gonna put a little bit more mist over my face. Woo! Like, I love this stuff so much that I show you guys. There it is, love it so much. There's like a smaller version too, but that one wasn't too much. I think it was only 20 bucks. The smaller version is I think 16, 15 or $16. It's definitely at Sephora. So here it is. So, and then now we're gonna record our reel. So before I record reels, what I do is um, a lot of research. So you wanna make sure you're seeing like what is kind of trending right now as reels. Um, you don't always have to do what's trending. Like if it doesn't fit your niche, like don't make it, don't force it. it like, cause it definitely comes off as forced for sure. Um, but I did find this one reel that was like trending on both TikTok and Instagram. Um, and I really liked it and it seemed simple enough. So I'm gonna show you guys real quick. So I always save the reels that I want to do. Oh wait, let me replay it because the sound was off. That's ruining it. Where is it? This one. See that? So that's the transition I'm going for right there. That little woo. Can you do it? Can I do it here? So it's like woo. Something like that, right? So I started it yesterday. I did a couple takes of like like beginning it because obviously I wanted you know to show my before and then this will be my after look. So I'm gonna try very hard <laughs> to do the second part today. So I'm gonna actually film it um, on my phone. Guys, you guys are not telling me this makeup was, yeah, it's a little something. All right, so I'm gonna, <laughs> sorry about that. I'm gonna film, um, film it on my actual phone and then I will upload it and cut it in Instagram um, as well as like doing it for Twitter. Actually, if I cut it in Instagram, just save the video and then you could just upload it to TikTok and you'll be fine. Did I say Twitter? It's early, it really is, sorry. Um, so yeah, so let me try. I'm gonna try to like film, film this part. I started about on this wall yesterday so the wall won't change and again, it's white so it'll really like have my hair pop out. So, all right. Watch me as I do this. This doesn't show, it's just the white wall. So let's, let's just see if we can get it together and then cut it in Instagram app. Here we go.
Okay, I did it. So now I just have to like edit it a little bit. Wait, you'll see like. Oh, maybe not. I think I hit it. All right, so I might have to just do a little bit of um, editing just to make sure that transition. Come on now. So I just have to make sure that transition is as smooth as possible and then I think I am ready to post it, giving the girls a good hair reveal. Okay, so I'm gonna post that and like as you can see, like there's a lot of like do over, do over, do over, do over when you're making just one reel. So I absolutely just have so much respect for people who, you know, have been at this, who have been doing this and this is their money maker. Like making content is not a joke. Like it can take hours to produce one 15 second like footage like it's really insane but before i leave you guys to it let me find one more question that i can answer for you let's see okay so this last question i got was actually um kind of touching and something i didn't think of doing okay so this last question was actually really touching and gave me a really really sweet idea so it says would you write a letter to future cadence like to give to her on her 18th birthday I think this is actually a really good idea and something that I'm now going to like really give some thought to. Um, it would be really interesting to write two letters, one to me, maybe talking to my child self, um, talking about where I am now, who I am now and what I was able to do despite what happened to us as a child and what happened to us, you know, in between me now and me as a child. I definitely want to write that type of letter and I absolutely want to write an honest letter to my daughter. Um, Because I think like no matter how hard I try to parent in the way that I parent, there are decisions that I have had to make ones that I never wanted to make, but decisions that I have had to make because of what's, you know, like gone on in the journey I've talked to you guys about since moving to Charlotte and before moving to Charlotte, that I do have fear, big fear about that she will resent me for and that she will not understand until she needs to make those decisions. God forbid that she needs to make those decisions herself. But I feel like children are owed honesty and I don't need her to agree with everything I've done to protect myself and to make a space, space, safe space for myself in order to raise her as best I can. But I do need her to understand where I was coming from, right? So with that information, I think that she can do better for her life, whatever better is for her. Um, and I'm gonna be there to support whatever it is that she does choose. But I really like that idea. So thank you for that. I'm absolutely not only gonna write that letter to myself, but I'm gonna write an honest one to my daughter. Um, and of course, you know, with appropriate age, 16 to 18, she will absolutely be able to read that. And I'm, I, I would feel okay with her reading um, what, I, what I deem, you know, necessary to put in, in writing for her. And so, yeah, I think that would really help me with my any fears of that. There's no perfect parenting. There's no, like, no matter what you do, like, you're going to do it differently than your parents, hopefully, you know. But it doesn't matter. Your kid is going to have some sort of criticism for how you've handled life and how you've raised them um, in that life. And so I would rather, you know, have an open line of communication with my daughter. I would rather she feel that, you know, she can voice her feelings, how things may have affected her indirectly affected her and I want to be listening and I'm um, not only do I want to be listening I want to be prepared to um also just give like in insightful like feedback like okay I hear you um I hear how you were feeling but I also want to be able to present my side my part um and then hopefully we can go on from there right like to just really make sure that we're always hearing each other and and intentionally understanding each other so yeah that's about it Thank you for that question. Thank you for that idea. Um, I'm totally going to be using it. Thanks. All right, guys. So thank you so much for um, the questions. Thank you so much for watching this vlog. It is day seven of Vlogmas. We are doing it. And in just a little bit, you guys should see. By the time this video goes up, you guys should definitely see me posting um, that reel that we just worked on together. So again, thank you so much. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. See you later. Bye.